We are now going to be looking at provisional tax, which is also part of the fourth schedule. Provisional tax is also a prepaid tax, but the big difference between provisional tax and employee's tax is who calculates and pays it. Employee's tax is calculated and paid across the SAS by the employer, whereas provisional tax is calculated and paid across the SAS by the taxpayer himself. So, for example, me, if I'm working for someone, that employer will calculate employee's tax and pay it across. I will not do that calculation. But if I'm a provisional taxpayer, I will have to do my own calculation. So what is the big difference between the two of them? Employee's tax only gets calculated on remuneration, but provisional tax gets calculated on everything. So the idea behind provisional tax, again, is to make sure that you make payments during the year. So, let's quickly talk about it just practically. So let's say March until February is your tax year. I'm going to remind you again, over here from about July until December, this is what we call tax season. This is when SARS opens up its assessments and says, for this tax year that's happened, now calculate and pay your taxes. Okay, So that happens there. Now, if you're a provisional taxpayer, think about this quite practically now. Let's say you are a sole trader. You make socks and sell it to your local community. Okay, so you make socks and you sell it to your local community. Now, what, what provisional tax wants you to do is it wants you to go and say, okay, the reason why this person is going to be paying provisional tax is because there's no employee's tax being calculated on those amounts. So we need this person to also pay tax throughout the year and not just during the tax season. So what they'll then do is they'll say to this sole trader, halfway through the year, so six months in, you will make a payment, which is called your first provisional tax payment, and at the end of the year, you'll make your second provisional tax payment. Then there's a period after this, somewhere in here, where you can make a third provisional if you have to do it. All of that is before you do your final tax return. Okay, but for now, just bear with me. So what I want you to understand is the following. Let's say this person, sole trader, Year one, they made taxable income of 200,000. Year three, it was 280,000. Um, or let's say year two, sorry. Year three, it was 160,000. Year four, it was 400,000. Okay, so what I'm trying to show you is the following. It is practically very difficult for you to six months into the year to say, how much am I going to make for the entire year and to pay half the tax of it? So imagine now what this means. It means six months into the year, you need to say to SARS, I believe that I'm going to be earning X amount and you need to pay half of that in tax. Now guys, that is very difficult and it's impossible quite often in real life. Let's take a big supermarket, pick and pay. Do you think pick and pay knows exactly six months into the year how much they're going to make exactly for the rest of the year? No, definitely not. It's not possible. You don't know if more people are going to buy things, less people are going to buy things. Is there going to be a surge in the economy, a slump in the economy? Is your shop going to burn down? What's going to happen? So what I want you to understand from the start is that the, the provisional tax payments are all based on estimates. The taxpayer has to constantly make an estimate and say, I estimate this to be my taxable income. It's not based on actual amounts for the most part. It is also very important for you to understand that you might be in a situation where you pay employee's tax and provisional tax. So, for example, this sole trader, let's say they are also employed by X Limited. So, X Limited pays them. So, let's say they do this making the socks, they do it on weekends, and during the week they work for X Limited. X Limited will then withhold employee's tax, and because they're a sole trader, they'll also have to calculate provisional tax. So it is possible to pay or to be subject to both of them. It does not mean that you're paying extra taxes or too much in the year. You will see that they take each other into account. So first thing we need to answer is who is a provisional taxpayer? Right, so you can find in paragraph 1 of 4th schedule. 
Provisional taxpayer means any person, look here, other than a company, so not a company, who derives income by way of any remuneration from an employer that is not registered or any amount which is not remuneration. So what they're trying to say here is, you must be, if you're a natural person, you must be a provisional taxpayer. If you earn any amount of income which is not subject to employee's tax, so that is if your employer is not registered, so maybe the person paying you is an American citizen, or if it's not remuneration. So I'm going to make the comment here, and you can make the same for yourself. Thus, when a natural person receives amounts not subject to employees tax right who must also be any company so guys every single company is a provisional taxpayer and then any person who the commissioner notifies very important then it will exclude the following any public benefit organization so PBO any recreational club any body corporate right those aren't too common to see but here we go any natural person who does not derive any income from the carrying on of any business. Make sure you see that. So the first thing is they say, if you are carrying on a business, then you will always be a provisional taxpayer. So let me just go. This person I used who is a sole trader who also works for X Limited, because they're a sole trader, they carry on a business and they must be a provisional taxpayer. But now I'll see what they say. They say, if you are... so. If you're in a situation where you do not carry on a business, then pay attention to the following. First up, you do not need to be, so remember, you are not a provisional taxpayer if your taxable income does not exceed the tax threshold. So you pay less than the minimum amount of tax. Right? That's not too worried for you guys. You can still do the calculation, it will work out because your, your rebates, uh, your primary and secondary rate will eliminate that. Okay? B. Much more important, this is the important one. The taxable income of a person derived from interest, dividends, foreign dividends, and the rental from the letting of fixed property, and any remuneration from an employer that is not registered does not exceed 30,000. So they say, summarize it like this. If you are carrying on a business, you are definitely going to be a provisional taxpayer. Okay, but if you are not carrying on a business, then you don't have to be a tax provisional taxpayer. But... If the interest that you earn, the dividends that you earn, the foreign dividends that you earn, and the rental from fixed property, if that exceeds 30,000 rands, then you must be a provisional taxpayer. In other words, if the interest, dividends, foreign dividends, and rental income does not exceed 30,000, you are excluded from being a provisional taxpayer. Right, and here it is just summarized in that form. For the most podcasts, you'll also be told who are the provisional taxpayers.